Hey there Luma, it's Denise from LumaHead.com and in this video I want to show you how to make pot protectors or covers. It is a set of four different sizes but for this video we're going to focus on this small size uh, and in the written pattern you'll find the other three. For this particular one you're going to need a 31 peg loom, 28 yards of worsted weight yarn, a needle, scissors, and a locking stitch holder or something like it, like a clip. All right, well, without any further delay, let's get started with a drawstring cast on of those 31 pegs. One quick note, I've put my stitch marker on peg 31 instead of one because I want you to note that last peg. All right, so get your single strand of worsted weight yarn. I'm going to attach mine to the anchor peg using a simple knot. You can use a slip knot if you're more comfortable with that. And then take the working yarn and you're gonna put it between the first and last peg. You can go left to right or right to left. It's not gonna have any effect on the pattern. And then take it behind peg one in front of two and continue in that zigzag method of adding the working yarn to the knitting loom. So in and out, in and out, in front, then behind, in front, then behind, until you reach peg 31, go behind 31, and then take the yarn and lay it loosely over the next few pegs. So here is peg one where the yarn is in front, but there's only one loop. So you go to peg two and you take the bottom loop over the top and knit off. And what you're gonna be doing from this point on is that you're going to knit only the pegs that have two loops. And you'll notice that that is every other peg because remember we were doing a zigzag method of adding the yarn to the knitting loom. So in and out, in and out. Every other peg will have two loops. This one doesn't. This one does when you lay the yarn loosely over the next pegs. All right, you're gonna continue until you reach uh, the last peg, which in this uh, particular loom is going to be peg 31. Once you reach that peg, which you're not gonna knit, you're done with your cast on and you're ready for rows one and two where you're just going to knit the rows. So peg 31, you don't do anything with. You're going to start on peg one and you're going to knit off. So I'm using the flat version of the knit stitch here where you just basically lay the working yarn over the existing loop take the bottom one over the top and knit off you can also use the u wrap where you half wrap your peg and then take the bottom loop over the top and knit off either one of those will work including the true version of the knit stitch remember you need two rows so continue with your knit stitch for that second row and once you're done with it, then we're ready to move on to row three. And for this row, we're now going to knit the purl stitch. All right, so you're back at peg one, right? But first you can take the knot off that anchor peg because your yarn is secure and you don't need it anymore and to leave it on would be a big mistake. Then take your working yarn, put it under the existing loop from the top, scoop up, and you're gonna create a new loop. The loop that's on the peg, you're gonna take it off and put that new loop you created on and then pull your yarn, your working yarn to tighten. All right, let's go to the next one. You're gonna put the working yarn under the existing loop from the top, scoop up and create a new loop. Take the old one off, put the new one on and pull. From the top, scoop up, create a new loop Take the old one off, put the new one on, and tighten. Continue to do that. You need a whole roll of purl stitches. So here's your chance to practice that purl stitch. And once you've done all 31 pegs with the purl stitch, you're ready for rows four through nine where you're going to repeat rows one through three two more times and this is what that looks like I'm going to knit two rows and then purl one row and then knit two rows again and then purl one row so literally you're doing rows one through three 
two times and once you're done with that you are ready for rows 10 and 11 super easy you're just going to knit those two rows and you guys are already experts so as you knit let me take this time to say thank you to carol maple from promise learning atl and penny pitcher barbara ledger laurie shaw bob urghardt and joanne Kleber for covering the cost of closed captioning this video for us thank you so much guys i really appreciate it once you're done with those two rows, you are then ready for row 12, where you're going to do a row of the figure eight stitch. And I'm gonna show you how. To start row 12, you should have finished the previous rows and your yarn is now sitting on peg 31. We're gonna work these two pegs here peg one and peg two. So you're gonna take the working yarn and you're gonna skip peg one. Coming from behind, you're gonna go to peg two and you're going to half wrap that peg and then with the working yarn, cross over and go behind peg one and come back forward, half wrap peg one, cross over. So you should have a loop on peg one and peg two Hold on to that and knit off pegs one and two. And now your yarn is sitting on peg one right here. You see that? All right, now we're gonna work the next two pegs, peg two and peg three. So you're gonna skip peg two and again come from behind peg three and half wrap crossover, come around from the back cross over in front of peg two and now both pegs should have two loops and you're going to knit off both pegs. So I'm gonna knit off peg two and I'm gonna knit off peg three. And now your yarn is going to be on peg two. So you're done knitting pegs one and two. They're done. And now you're gonna be working with pegs three and four, these two right here. And peg three right here is the one that you're gonna skip. So get your working yarn from peg two, come behind, you're skipping peg three, going behind four. And from the back, come forward, half wrap, cross over, and from behind peg, three, come around, half wrap, cross over. And by the way, this is where you're creating that figure eight where the stitch gets its name from, right? Now these two pegs both have two loops. You're gonna uh, take the bottom over the top and knit off. And now you are done. Your uh, working yarn is on peg three. You've done one, two, and three. Those three pegs are done you knit them so let's do it again now i'm taking all the way to the end right now we're doing pegs 30 and 31 and what i want you to notice is that when you do 30 and 31 your yarn is still on 30 your working yarn is not at the end and so you're going to need to work pegs 31 and 1 so you figure eight pegs 31 and one so that your working yarn is on peg 31. It's on that last peg, okay? And then now you're gonna uh, flip your uh, loom over and you'll see that first loop, which is really loose and really big. You're on uh, peg one. And what I want you to do is take that loose loop, that very first loop, and I want you to bring it over, remount it onto peg one, and knit off and what this does is it neatens it up because that first uh, figure eight is going to look very loose and sloppy and so you remount it to make it neat and now we're ready to uh, knit the next row the next row is row 13 and you are going to now do what's called an e-wrap so you're gonna e-wrap 31 pegs. Many of you are very familiar with this stitch. And all you're gonna need to do is take the working yarn, which is on peg 31, and go to peg one and completely wrap the peg. 
then go to the second and completely wrap. You're basically coming from behind forward and completely wrap the peg and then go to the one next to it. Keep doing that till you get to peg 31. And peg 31 is the last one that you're gonna wrap. So it's the first one that you're going to knit off. When you do this, you secure the yarn and it won't fall apart and undo all of your uh, wrapped pegs. Then just take the bottom loop over the top and knit off and you just continue to do this. You need to knit off all 31 pegs and that's your E-wrap of 31 pegs. And then you are ready to do rows 14 and 15, which are just a repeat of rows 12 and 13. And because this can be a little confusing, I wanna review it again. So when you're done doing all your E-wraps, your yarn is back on 13, you're going to figure eight, pegs one and two, knit them both off, and now your yarn is on one. So then you're gonna do two and three, right? Figure eight, knit them both off, and now your yarn is on peg two. That is the figure eight. You're gonna continue to do that. Don't forget that when you do 30 and 31, right, and you knit off, your yarn is on 30. And so you are going to need to do peg 31 and one. You're gonna figure eight stitch those two pegs because that's gonna leave your working yarn on peg 31. You gotta work the two of them to get it on the last one. And now your yarn is on peg 31. Don't forget to go capture that first loop from your figure eight, which is really loose and ugly. You wanna remount it onto peg one. So grab it, put that loose loop over the existing loop on peg one, take the bottom loop over the top and knit off. And now you've neatened it up and you're ready to move on to the next row where you again will e-wrap that row. So wrap all your pegs and then you're going to knit off. And then you're ready for something super interesting. What we're going to be doing now, I am going to call a petal cast off. And what this cast off does is that it creates like these loops that uh, go onto the sides of the pot to protect the sides instead of the bottom. And so as, as you cast off, you create these loops that look like petals. That's why I'm calling it a petal cast off. And the way you're gonna do this is that right now your yarn, working yarn should be on peg 31. So you're gonna do like a figure eight with pegs one and two, and then you knit off. Just like you've been doing the figure eight, right? And then you're going to now uh, get a locking stitch marker or a clip or even a stitch holder and put it on attach it to the loop on peg one and then get your working yarn and you're gonna wrap like you're doing an e-wrap and knit off with that first loop that's loop number one with that same on that same peg you're gonna wrap and knit off and wrap and knit off and wrap and, knit off. and you're gonna do this 10 times it's gonna create like a cord and then I'm gonna show you next, but you're going to continue to wrap and knit off. And you notice that I am on peg one, where the working yarn is, is where I'm working, okay? Because remember when you do the figure eight uh, and you knit off, you end up on the last peg that you knit off, which is where you are now creating this cord of 10, knit stitches right there on the same cord and you could see it being created as I wrap and knit off you can see the cord being created right now you're going to take your locking stitch marker it has that first one that you made you're going to stretch it so that you can use that loop that very first loop you need to remount it okay I take the little locking stitch marker off and with my hook, I'm stretching that loop 
so that I can remount it. Now, it looks a little more complicated than it is. It's because I'm trying to do this behind a camera. It's going to be easier for you. Okay, so you remount it on top of the existing one and then knit off. There you go. You see that? And then you take that loop that's on peg one and you move it over to peg two over the existing loop and knit off. Now you created a petal. You take that petal and just so that you can have it somewhere, you've, you've uh, cast off peg one, put that uh, loop on peg one and then now you're gonna do the next two pegs. Just like before, you're gonna figure eight those two pegs. So figure eight, wrap, cross over, wrap, cross over, and then knit off. And your working yarn is now on peg two, right? And so this is where we're going to do the petal. So get your clip stitch holder, locking stitch marker, whatever you're going to use, grab that first loop, knit off. And now again, I'm going to knit that same peg 10 times to create a cord. So real quick, you're going to do 10. Now in the other bigger sizes of the project, you actually are going to do it 12. And you see that my little stitch marker came off but I can see where I left it so I remounted I like you guys to see some of my mistakes because then you know uh, what to do if that happens to you um, and then you just keep going so again you saw this as a symbol of a knit 10 within parentheses on the bigger sizes you're gonna see that it says 12 those are my numbers you can do 15 20 25 however Ever long you want to make your petals you could just continue to knit that same peg over and over to infinity or you can make yours shorter like if you only want to knit five then just knit five times it's your project and you could do as you please you're free to be creative and you don't have to do things the way I do them you can do them any way you want all right so you see that I knit off I remounted, I knit off, and now I take the loop off peg two. I move it to peg three. I tighten that because you want it to look nice and neat. Put the pedal on that peg two. It just holds on to it. You don't want the project kind of flipping all over the place, which is why I mount the pedal right there on the peg that I cast off. You are casting off as you go. So now you're gonna do the next two pegs and go on and go on, do the same thing until you're back on peg 31 and I'm gonna show you how to do peg 31. So once you get to those last two pegs, uh, when you're at 30 and 31, you might feel that it's a little odd, right? Cause you're gonna be left with just peg 30 one uh in other words you're done with peg thir uh, 30 you place the loop on peg 31 these are the last two loops you're going to do um you've cast off 30 30 and now you're on peg 31 and you knit off and you're like wait i don't have another one to do that figure eight you're not going to do the figure eight with 31 you're just going to take it and start doing your 10 or 12 or 15, however many uh, knit offs you're gonna do. So right there, you're gonna take 31, add your clip and start doing your knit stitches, whatever number you're gonna do. In my case, I'm gonna do 10. You understand I'm, what I'm saying? This is your last peg. It does not have a partner. It is a loner. So when you reach peg 31, you just right there, you do your your um, number of knit offs. Like I said, in my case, I'm doing 10 on peg 31. And that is your cast off for 31. So when you get there, do whatever number of uh, knit offs you're gonna do to create your cord and get your scissors ready because you're going to cut your working yarn when you reach 30. And I'm hoping this 
uh, it doesn't seem complicated, guys. It's super easy. You just need practice. Start with the smaller project, okay? Uh, and I forgot to say, when you put the, the knit off, try to make it really loose so you can remount it easily. You saw how easily I remounted this stitch. Uh, and take it off before you do the knit off because it's just going to make it easier and always try to keep your stitches tight so it doesn't look sloppy you know pull on your working yarn to make it neat all right so you knit off now you you're going to cut uh, a, a string leave enough because you're going to have to um you're going to have to do a little sewing to need neaten it up so leave about uh i don't know th three to five inches right uh of it and then this is your last one here's for your cast off from the top you're going to bring it down and then take it off you see that's that last cast off and you're done you have all of your stitches all of your petals all 31 uh but you're going to have to sew that so that it looks neater but first let's go ahead and you're going to the bottom and you're going to pull that cast on that drawstring cast on you're going to pull on it as if you were going to close it just like if it was a hat and um it can be a little uh funky to uh, completely pull it so if necessary go back and pull on some of these strings if you find that that pulling on the drawstring doesn't close it like you want so you see that when i'm pull i'm going in that direction and you'll see some of the loops just pull them and that's just going to make it easier for the drawstring in uh to work for you to close it you probably can just pull on it really hard to close it but I find that sometimes it's just easier to pull on the strings on the loops to kind of help the drawstring now you want to close it just enough to leave a little tiny hole you don't want to close it all the way up at least um, I didn't want to because you don't want to turn this into a hat that's why you leave this opening because we're going to steam block the project and that's going to keep it from making a hat because if you continue to make this bigger and bigger and bigger and you close it and you tighten it, it's going to curl up and create a hat and you don't want that. All right, so now you can just take the petals off of the peg and you're going to free your loom, your project from the loom. Um, so just keep taking those petals off and then you look you see what it looks like it it almost looks like it wants to curl up like it wants to do like a hat kind of thing but don't worry because i'm going to show you how to do this you're going to block it and it's going to be fine all right and uh, i'm sorry that the camera just went buzzerk here but i wanted you to see what it looks like okay and things get a little blurry my filming here just was a rock but it gives you the main idea you're going to take that drawstring that's left and you're going to thread the needle and then all i'm basically doing here is that i'm feeding the needle through those cast on loops i know it looks blurry and it looks kind of crazy and i do apologize um ever since i moved i don't have my screen where i look as i'm working and i can see what you guys are going to see um in this setup i can't really see that so i do apologize but like i said you get the gist of it i'm taking the needle through the cast on loops because i want to secure the size of this little hole one and two i want to weave in uh, my stitch so here is uh, the beginning of it and you see it's a little lopsided so i'm going to take my needle through it i just want it to look better and so i create a little loop at the top um it's just when the row when you go to do the second row it kind of looks a little lopsided so i just want it to look a little better and so you see that i take my um my needle and I just kind of create an extra loop to even things out and then now all I'm going to do is weave in this uh, very long string and I'm going to take it to the opposite side the side I don't want 
to I'm not going to be using and then I just cut off the working yarn and that's it now the little hole is secure it's not going to open or close even if I wash this it's going to stay intact all right now get that other string from the last petal and uh, thread a needle and then you're going to close this up so that it looks like the rest of the petals so just um Take the needle with the working yarn and feed it through a couple of loops until it closes up. And like I said, now that petal looks like the rest of the petals. And um, I'm going to show you a, a, a two ways to, to steam block this. I'm using a steam. You can use a steam iron. By the way, you can also just wet it and uh, leave it overnight and it'll shape but this does need to be blocked whether it's wet block or steam blocked so i have a portable steamer and for my larger uh, project this is the one on the 41 peg loom i actually did not take the project off the loom because this is a kind of a like a light steamer and so i left the project on it and i steam blocked the project while it was still on the loom I felt that this worked better but you don't have to do it you could take it off and steam it but when you do that you have to shape it with your hand as you go here's an example I took this one off before steaming it and as you can see it does curl a lot um, and that's okay I wasn't worried about it because I know I have a handheld steamer and this is what I mean if you're going to take the project off the loom and then steam it then you have to shape it with your hand so you steam and shape and steam and shape I also have a steam iron and I can use the steam iron uh, if you don't have this then you can wet block and Good Nick Kisses has a video on wet blocking. If I was going to wet block, what I would do is I would get a sprayer and spray the project, then pin it to something where it's shaped, and then come back the next day uh, and take it off and see if it looks like I want it to. And if it doesn't, then I would wet it again pin it and come back the next day. I like steam blocking because it happens immediately. Right now, I can see as I steam and shape and steam and shape, right? And you can see that the curls are coming out within a few minutes. Uh, they're out. And don't worry about it. it. It will become completely flat. And um, in fact, let me show you how flat it's going to look when I'm done with the steaming, with the steam blocking. So here it is just a few minutes later and I did the same with this green one. And actually the yellow one is so little it didn't need any steam blocking. But if yours turns up a little, like if it wanted to be a hat, you can do that. Well, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this project. I hope you'll make one and give some of them away. You should always want to love with your looms. Share the video because it helps me a lot. And don't forget that the written pattern is at lumahat.store. Um, thank you so much. Come back and loom with me again.